Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and today's video is all about getting you up and running with one of our most popular and powerful plugins, Signal. Thousands of Cinema 4D artists use Signal in practically every scene file to help them loop and animate almost any object inside of Cinema 4D. Now, by the end of this video, you'll be up and running with Signal and comfortable using it inside of any scene file. Today is only about the basics, but if you ever want to learn more about Signal, we have tons more training. We'll link it up down below in the description. All right, as long as you have Grayscale Gorilla plugins installed, then you are all set and ready to go. Let's jump on into Cinema 4D and let's get started. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and let's get started by building one of the most popular and powerful effects that artists use Signal for, and that's looping animation. It's really easy to get started. First thing we need is something to animate. I'm just gonna grab a cube here. With the cube selected, I'm gonna go to my Grayscale Gorilla menu and click on Signal Plus. This is gonna add a signal tag right to my cube and it's a question mark, which means it's asking, what do you want to animate? Well, from here, it's real simple. Just drag in anything you wanna animate into this tag. In this case, let's start with rotation. If And I wanna actually rotate all three of these. So. I'm gonna grab the R in rotation, drag it up into the tag. And you can see the tag now says R for rotation. And if we click the tag, all three of the rotation parameters are ready to animate. Now you can animate directly right here in this tab, and we're gonna do that in just a second. But for looping animation, all you have to do is go to add modifiers, click on noise, and there is now a noise tab up here at the top. Under the noise tab, you need to tell Signal how much you want it to vary the rotation. So under here, I'm just gonna say 90 degrees per rotation angle, and let's go ahead and hit play. All right, so now you can see we have noise, but if we wait till frame 150 here, you'll see that it won't loop exactly. Well, from here, all we have to do is now tell Signal at what point do you want this animation to loop, and I want it to loop at frame 150. You could set whatever frame length your scene is right here, and now, no matter what we do here in the signal uh, noise parameter, it will always come back and loop perfectly, which means we can say, hey, I don't want you to rotate negatively, only positively, and it'll still come around here and loop. Boom, I'm gonna turn this back on, and we could talk about some of these other settings, including the speed. So if you wanna speed up or slow down the animation, you could just say something like 0.5, this will slow it down by half. And if you don't like the particular type of animation that's happening, you could just change the seed and you'll get a brand new random loop for every seed type. Now there's also bias and contrast, which will basically make the animation uh, stronger. Now it will still only go 90 degrees, but it'll, it'll push further into 90 degrees. And you can see by turning up the bias contrast, we're getting much stronger, faster animation. So you could dial this up and down to taste. And you could also set different noise types here. We, we included all of these Cinema 4D noise types that you could play with if you want to try different types of animation. And it's that easy to get looping animation. I'm gonna turn the speed back to one. And you can also stack signal tags. So if you also want to add position animation, all you have to do is do the same thing and let's go ahead to Grayscale Gorilla. Let's click on Signal Plus, click on the cube, and this time we're gonna drag position on top of our question mark. Same thing, we can come in here and say, let's add noise. Now, in this case, we could just animate and say, let's go 100 by 100 by 100. And same thing, let's set our loop point to 150, and let's hit play. We are now getting both animations, we have position and rotation, and we could even accentuate uh, maybe the X and, and Y to move this cube a little bit more. And because we have our loop point set, uh, again, no matter what we do, this will always come back around and loop. Uh, so in this case, let's double the speed and really get this thing moving. You could crank up the bias and contrast. <laughs> okay, that might be a little bit too much. Let's tone it down. But it's that fast to change uh, direction and and try new animation. And this is why uh, this is why I love Signal. It's why a lot of artists use Signals because instead of messing with keyframes on this, uh, you could very quickly change your mind and say, no, I want this to be faster. And you instantly get looping animation. And uh, let's say if you wanted to change the length of your animation and say, okay, now I want this to be 200 frames long, 
Well, again, you're not messing with keyframes trying to get it to loop at 200. All you have to do now is select both signal tags, come down here to loop point and select 200 and you are now ready to go. You'll have perfect animation. Now, what's really great about Signal is it's not just position, rotation, and scale. It also works for practically any parameter you can animate. Now, for this animation, I'm gonna show you another faster way to add Signal to your animation, and that's using Drop Zone. So under your Grayscale Gorilla tab here, you'll see this plugin called Drop Zone right there. Once we open it, you can see it's a really simple plugin. It's just literally a place to drop stuff into. And this is basically an intelligent way for you to animate. This also works with HDRI link. If you drag any textures into here, it'll set up an HDRI link. Drop zone is super powerful and I highly recommend you dock it in your interface. Now, again, it doesn't have to be that big. So you could grab it, shrink it down. I'm just gonna have it over here for now. And if you don't wanna see the words and add even more room, you can come in here and say, show window title, turn it off. And now we have drop zone. So what does drop zone let me do? Well, in the cube, if we go to the object here and we have this, uh, these object properties, we now have control over the size of our cube right here. And again, you can control this using signal. In this case, I'm just gonna drag the size X into drop zone and it will automatically set up uh, actually, it's set up all three of these. And again, that's fine. Uh, I can do the same thing, go to noise and say, I only want to mess with the X. So I'm gonna zero out the Y rotation and I don't want it to go negative. I only want it to go positive. And so now uh, we have both. Now with everything else going on, it may be hard to see what's happening. And you can very easily go to your other signal tags and just turn down the strength to see what one of them's doing. So now if we go back to our original setup here with the variation, we could turn this up and we could start to really crank it. And again, this is where the bias contrast might come in handy where it'll push way in and way out. And we could also tone down the speed and there we go. And because we set our loop point to 200, it will also guarantee that it will loop around. So now we have three sets of animation. Let's Go ahead and select the other ones and turn up the strength. And we now have this cr pretty crazy animation here, all driven by signal, set up very quickly. And you can, again, stack these, compound these, and they're really, really fast to get going. So another popular way to use signal is for camera animations. Now in this case, I wanna set up an animation that's rotating around this chair. Uh, it's really simple to do with signal. In fact, there's even a preset for it. Let me show you how to set it up. First thing you need is a null right in the middle of your scene. And really it's right in the middle of your object. If your object's off to the side, just center the null right around the object you want to orbit around. Then you need a camera. I already have a camera here in the scene just aimed right at my chair here. And you need to parent the camera under the null. And then of course, we're just gonna animate this null uh, moving around. So really quickly, now that we have drop zone set up, we can just drag this right into drop zone. It'll make the tag right away and we can start animating it there. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second, but there's also literally a preset for this. If you go under extensions, user scripts, user scripts, signal scripts, presets, uh, there's this one right here, spin forever. You just click it, automatically adds the tag and it automatically spins around uh, literally forever, as long as you want it to spin, it will spin. Uh, now you have control over the speed of this. By default, it's set to 360 degrees every 90 frames. But in this case, I just wanna match timeline. There's a little button right here in the base tab. If you click match timeline, this end point will match exactly your timeline. And now because the script automatically set up 360 degrees, we have a perfectly looping uh, animation around our chair. So uh, again, this is a perfect loop. This is just a normal rotation, but you can also layer on things on top of this. Um, so for example, uh, you can go to your camera and let's say we wanted to animate a little bit of wobble in the camera. Well, for this, I'm just gonna grab rotation, drag it into drop zone and use another noise tab to subtly add little 
uh, rotation. So I'm just gonna do something real subtle like one degree, and I'm gonna do a little bit more like five degrees on the B rotation just cause that'll kind of tilt the camera. Uh, and from here, all we have to do is set it to 200 frames for looping. And now we get our rotation and uh, some wobble. Now this is way too much. There's a few ways to dial this back. You could turn down all these numbers, but we also just have a strength parameter per tab inside of Signal. So if you just wanna tone the noise down, you don't have to mess with all that. You could just tone it down. And in this case, I wanna slow the speed down as well. This should be a subtle effect here, just to add a little bit of natural kind of movement, almost like we're walking around the chair trying to do it. Um, and you can make it uh, as crazy as you want or dial it in all the same. Okay, so another powerful way to use Signal is for simple camera animation. So here's a good example. Let's say I wanna find the detail here on this chair, and I would just wanna pan across it in a nice, slow, controlled move to show a little parallax and to just show all this little detail. Well, that's really simple to set up. Up here in the camera, let's decide which direction we wanna animate. In this case, it's along the X axis. So I'm just gonna drag X into drop zone. It's gonna automatically make the signal tag. And we come down here and we first thing we do is turn on set linear. So by default, what it's doing is it's going from zero centimeters, it, which is the center of the scene, and then moving to wherever the camera was set up when we, when we turned on signal, and that is negative 4.7. So if we just hit play, it's gonna go from zero to negative 4.7. However, I want it to go the other way. I want it to start uh, over here and move to the right. So let's set up both of these uh, uh, start and end positions. The min, we're gonna set way over here. We want it to start there. And then when we go to the later on in the animation, we can now set the max by going over here. Okay, so now by default, uh, signal's gonna move from min to max in a linear fashion, right? Because we selected set linear over the course of 90 frames. And we have this button right here called match timeline. So as soon as we click that, it's now gonna take 200 frames to go from left to right. And this is a awesome little linear camera move that I will use all the time. I'll just like cut into something like this from a wide shot to grab a little bit of detail. And it's that simple to set up. You could swap your min and max if you just want it to move in the other direction. We have a little button here to make it do that. And then of course, we also have all of these easing presets, which we're gonna get into in just a second, uh, where you can start to do um, uh, more ease in and ease outs. Uh, I don't like these for these kind of camera moves. I typically go with something more linear, uh, but it's there for other types of animations. All right, I wanna show you one more getting started tip here for Signal, if you're new to Signal. I use this all the time. For this one, we're gonna need another object. I'm gonna grab our plus library, go under models and grab one of these doodads here. And this is just gonna be a little bit more fun to animate. All right, so in, for this one, I wanna show you the looping and additive modes. And I'm gonna start really simply with just a animation going from center and moving on its X axis over here. So how do we quickly do that? Drag the X axis in the drop zone. And under here, we're gonna set how far it goes. Let's just set this to 25 uh, centimeters. And that way it'll just animate across. Remember, we have to set to set linear, and this will automatically animate from minimum to maximum. We, by the way, you can also mess with this graph if you want to make your own custom curves, but we have all these presets here. So let's select quint out. This will jump off the finish line and, and slowly come to a stop over the uh, animation time right here, which is set to 90 frames. I'm gonna speed this up, go to 25 frames. So now we have a 25 frame animation, which is real fun, bloop. But the problem is it just stops there. And I rarely want it to just stop there. So we included some options here to give you more control over what happens after your animation is finished. Well, you can come down here and set this to loop. So loop literally just loops every 25 frames. It'll do the same animation again, okay? So that could be useful for certain types of things. Um, but here's even more useful stuff. You can go to ping pong and now it will go back and forth. So it'll go forward 25 frames and then reverse for 25 frames back to the start. 
And if we had something more like ease in and out, it'll uh, bounce between these two forever. <laughs> and it'll literally go out forever. As long as your uh, timeline is, it will uh, literally ping pong back and forth. All right, let's go back to our other preset. Again, really fast to jump between these things. And let me talk about my favorite one, which is called additive. Additive adds another 25 uh, centimeters every 25 frames, right? Because we set it up up here. So now every 25 frames, we, we do this animation. And this is true with any animation we set up here. Uh, we can add rotation and, and loop that forever, but this is a really fun way to add really simple, powerful animation here. Uh, let's go ahead and just add a rotation, which way we want it to rotate. Let's go with P. In fact, we could bring all of our rotation uh, into signal here. It'll give us options to animate all of this. Uh, in this case, we'll just set linear and we will set, uh, let's go with 170 degrees, and then we will say additive. And so now we have our little doodad rotating very linearly while it does this cool position thing. Okay, we could speed this up by changing the amount of speed, or we could also set the animation time down and that will also speed up our animation. So because we are using signal and not keyframes, we now are able to change any of these parameters without affecting the other ones, without messing with anything else. So for example, if I want to add noise to our position and have it continue to move forward, but make it a little bit more wiggly, we could layer on another one of those noise fields and we can speed up the noise. And now it will continue to push and push and push forward, but also be affected by noise. Um, and we could even crank up the bias to make it even more wiggly. And same things we did before, we could turn up the speed, we could, we could absolutely go crazy, or we could tone it down. I layer stuff on like this all the time. And these are really, really simple examples, but again, I highly encourage you, if you're using Signal and you're interested in how powerful this can be to check out some of our other videos, we'll link them down in the bottom here and up here on YouTube as well. Thanks again for watching everybody. And don't forget, we're just scratching the surface of what Signal can do. If you wanna dive even deeper into this powerful plugin, we have a bunch more videos and training down below. We'll link it up in the description. And with that, we'll see you in another video really soon. Bye everyone.